Hello there, Universal Studios. It's-a me, Professor Thorgy. Hi there, folks, and welcome to a brand new show here on Professor Thorgy. That's right, I said brand new show. So I've got Thorgy's Theories, Thorgy's 10, the Weekly Geekly Report, and now, this brand new show, My Big Geeky Idea. This whole channel is meant to be a celebration of what it means to be a geek, of what it means to be passionate and excited about something from the world of pop culture, and let's not lie, anybody out there who is a geek, at some point in time, you have looked at that thing that you love and gone, oh man, you know what I would love to see in it? That's what this show is. It is a time for me and maybe some special guests in the future to come on and say, this is the thing that we love and I would love to see this happen in it. And today, breaking news from the world of theme parks, oddly enough? Yeah, I didn't see that coming. But Universal Studios has now teamed up with Nintendo. They have signed a massive contract and they're going to be working together on a project. So yes, every Nintendo geek out there, the moment they heard this, all they could think is, what rides do I want to see? So without further ado, I give you my big geeky idea for the Nintendo theme park. A Nintendo theme park. It's a dream come true. So much so that Nintendo even created a game based around the very idea of it, so it's time to start planning. But where do we begin? There's so many games to choose from, so many attractions to build upon, so let's start with the main reason people go to amusement parks. The rides. You ask most people and they'll tell you that their favorite rides at Universal Studios are the crazy ones, the ones that fully immerse you into the movies that they're based upon, so let's do the same with the games. The first game I want to be immersed in is Metroid. When I went to Universal Studios, one of my favorite rides was the Jurassic Park one. Not because of the peaceful and relaxing boat ride during the first half of it, but because of the second half where you get sent into a dark spooky base and dinosaurs are running amok and at the end of it, a giant T-Rex head comes out and almost eats you. And as soon as I heard about this Nintendo park, all I could think about was that ride and how that base in the second half of it looked a lot like a space station. And that that T-Rex, with a few adjustments, could easily be turned into a great Ridley. Or if you want to go high tech with it, just make it one of those new 3D rides where you put on the glasses and the chair moves you to make it feel like you're actually flying around. Start off with you on a destroyed spaceship and Samus comes up to you and says, don't worry, I'll get you out of here. And then she leads you across this exploding space station and you can see all the 3D monsters flying around, including a giant Ridley flying around you and trying to attack your escape ship. Next up, I'm going to get this one out of the way because it's just too obvious. Mario Kart. Now the easy answer to this would be to just make a go-kart course and have each of the cars look just like the cars from the game. But imagine this. Again, take one of those 3D rides and let us go through an actual Mario Kart course. With the loops and the twists and the crazy jumps, let us see our favorite Mario characters rolling up next to us. I mean, that Luigi stare is pretty funny in the memes, but just imagine seeing that driving up next to you in real life. Or think about how cool the special effects could be with those power-ups. Feeling the track race by you when you get a mushroom boost, spinning around when you get hit by a banana peel, or seeing yourself shrink down when someone gets the lightning power-up. There's a lot you could do with this ride. And if you still want to do something with go-karts, there's always F-Zero. But every theme park needs a roller coaster, and I can't think of a better game to adapt into a roller coaster than the Donkey Kong Minecarts. Take your roller coaster carts, make them look like the minecarts, design a jungle area for you to race through, and put King K. Rool animatronics all across the ride. You'll go over the first hill and see him stealing the bananas, you go past the first loop and you see him rising up on his pirate ship, and then right when you reach the end, you see an animatronic Donkey Kong delivering a muddy punch to him as the day is saved. But rides aren't the only thing that make amusement park special, there's also the attractions. Those things that let you relax and just soak in the fun at your own pace. And for the company that focuses so much on family-friendly games, Nintendo has some perfect choices. The number one choice being Hyrule. I tried to think of a Legend of Zelda ride, but that's the thing about Zelda. It's not really so much a level that you run through. It's a world that you experience. So just like Universal did with the Harry Potter world, I would advise them to create an actual life-size physical Hyrule kingdom that you can walk through. Make it feel just like the Hyrule that was in Ocarina of Time, and that way when Halloween rolls around, you can do a special event in which you have it look like it's being overrun by the zombies when Ganon was running it. Give a shop where we can buy knickknacks from the world of Zelda, especially a mask shop. No way am I leaving that place without a Majora's Mask. Also for bonus points, at night you could shine a giant angry moon into the sky. 
Although, that might freak out a few small children. And me. And speaking of things that would freak people out, every Halloween, Universal Studios comes up with some truly amazing attractions, letting people walk through their own horror movies. But what about all the people who want to experience the spirit of Halloween without being chased by zombies? Well, on that day, you turn your Nintendo Land into Luigi's Mansion. Have some bright and colorful ghosts pop up around each corner, whether it be someone in a costume or you actually want to go all out and have them be actual dancing light shows. Or just make it a year-round haunted house. You and your friends could walk around shouting, Mario, to your heart's content until a neon ghost pops up to scare you. But let's move away from the spooky stuff and think about the children. All parks need something kid-friendly for all the little ones who aren't big enough to go on the rides, so let's give them their very own Animal Crossing Kids Park. Nothing to do but run around and hug people dressed like giant stuffed animals. Also, they could visit Tom Nook and learn a valuable lesson about commerce. And I can't believe I've gotten this far into the show without bringing up Pokemon! I'm... kind of a fan. And I've got two attractions in mind for this franchise. The first being a nice, relaxing stroll down the rivers for a Pokemon Snap attraction. Remember how I talked about how the second part of the Jurassic Park ride would be great for Metroid? Well, before you get to that chaotic part of the ride, it's actually just a relaxing stroll down a river as peaceful dinosaurs poke their heads up to greet you. So, for Pokemon Snap, make that the whole ride, and replace the dinosaurs with Pokemon. Then, do the unthinkable thing that no theme park would ever allow anyone to do, and actually allow the people to take pictures on the ride. Do this and you'll have a ride where everyone will go on multiple times in order to catch them all. On their camera, that is. But that's not all. Nothing like this exists yet. But with the advancements we make each year in amusement park technology, you know it's right around the corner. And if Pokemon wouldn't encourage an attraction like this to be built, nothing will. Imagine this. You get in a line for a ride. You wait and you wait, slowly making your way through this long march. But when you reach the front of the line, it was all worth it, because you walk up to a giant screen. Across from you is another theme park patron in front of their own computer. And then you're each presented with a list of countless Pokemon, of which you get to choose six. And then the stage between the two of you lights up and a holographic actual Pokemon fight occurs between the two of you. It's the dream we've all had since we were kids! Well, actually the dream would be to live in a world with actual Pokemon, but still, this is pretty close. At least until theme parks start experimenting with genetic engineering, but I think I saw a documentary about why that was a bad idea. And no theme park is complete without the food. There's something about taking a meal you can get anywhere and giving it the name of an attraction that makes it that much more special. I don't know if it's special enough to pay five times the regular fee, but special nonetheless. And I've got a few ideas for this Nintendo park of my own. Let's start with the kids. Give the youngsters their own little shop to eat at with healthy and sweet snacks and have it all be themed around Kirby. You could even make little pink puffballs of ice cream with sprinkles on in the shape of his face. And speaking of adorable ice creams, I want a Pokemon ice cream store shaped like the Pokemon Center and you could have 150 flavors, each one named after one of the original Pokemon. Okay, that's actually nuts. I'm sorry. There's no way you can get 150 types of ice cream. It's impossible. And this is coming from the guy who just suggested real-life Pokemon fights. But still, everything else in that idea works. Get the number of flavors down to 50, and it's totally doable. Think about Dark Ride Chocolate, Tropius Fruit Sherbert, and of course the Snorlax Sunday, all of which can be mega-evolved if you want it to be a large. I kind of need an Ivysaur Mint Chocolate Chip right now. Actually, scrap that. I need to cut back on the ice cream. I'll just stick with the Go-Goat Yogurt. I could seriously have a whole channel where I just invented Pokemon flavors of ice cream. Don't think I won't. I'll do it. But this brings me to the big name in fine dining of our Nintendo land. Mario. That's right, you didn't think I was going to leave out Nintendo's poster boy. And out of all the choices I have of where to put him in this park, the number one place I would stick him is in his own restaurant. And not just because he looks like the Bob's Big Boy mascot. Here's my idea. Take Mario and turn every single character and power-up in those games into items on the menu. Want something light? Get a Luigi salad. Got a child with you? Well, then order from the Koopa Kids menu. Are you in the mood for a big filling meal? Well, then get the Bowser Burger with a side of Tanuki fries sprinkled with fire flower powder to make it extra spicy, and you can wash it all down with a one-up shake and finish it all off with a slice of Princess Peach cake. All right, folks, I could go on for hours with more ideas for this Nintendo theme park, but end of the day, the fact that a Nintendo theme park is actually going to exist is amazing to me, and I look forward to it. Just so long as Universal actually treats it right. 
Seriously, Universal, I just laid out a dozen ideas for you, and you don't have to use any of them, but if your Nintendo attraction is nothing but a Star Fox carousel called Slippy Toad's Wild Ride, I'm going to be ticked. I mean, I'll be ticked right after I ride it six times, shouting do a barrel roll, but I'll be ticked nonetheless. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this first episode of My Big Geeky Idea. If you did, then let me know with a thumb up, and please share and subscribe. I make fun, geeky videos every single week. Also, as always, I want to hear from you guys. What would you like to see in the Nintendo theme park? Leave your ideas in the comments down below. I always make sure to read through them, and I love hearing what you all have to say. Thanks, everyone, and I'll see you at Nintendo Land. Or at least in my next video.